around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers. And that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Sure made himself scarce in a hurry, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, it looks that way. The plaza seems pretty quiet. Maybe he got the wind up and rode right on out of town. You're giving him credit for too much sense, Chester. Yes, sir. The only time that Mallard bunch stops is when somebody stops them. Hey, come on, let's take a look in the Texas tree. All right. Something wrong? Kitty, I'm looking for Billy Mallard. Ah. Has he been around? Take a look at the mirror back of the bar. He's shot up half the town already and passed the word out that he's going to shoot up the rest of it before midnight. When was he here? Uh, half an hour ago, Matt. Drunk, mean. I can't stand him or his father. Maybe they do own half of Texas, but I hate him. Well, they're Texans, Miss Kitty, and that means they've always got to be... Chester. Stand- I told the Mullers when they brought their cattle up here last year that they'd have to act civilized. Come on, Chester. Sounded like it's up at the west end of the plaza. Yeah. It's probably the Occidental. Oh, just a second, Marshal. What? Huh? Oh, what is it, Mr. Colby? About those pistol shots, Marshal. Now, I reckon that's young Billy Meller kicking up his heels. Well, in about five minutes, he's going to be kicking him up in jail. No, 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 no. Let's not be hasty, Marshal Dillon. We have to think of the best interest of Dodge City in a situation like this. What? Those Mallers are mighty important people, you know. Own one of the biggest ranches in Texas. Always throw a lot of money around when they come up here with a herd. Well, as far as I'm concerned, he gets the same treatment as any other drunken cowboy. I'm sorry, Mr. Tobin. Now, wait a minute. All you're going to do is antagonize them. They'll turn their drives east from now on. They'll ship their stock out of Hayes City or Abilene. And you can't arrest Billy anyways. He's got that gunman, Tom Wayne, and 30, 40 Maller Ranch riders back of him. Look, I'll argue with you later. I got a job to do. Dylan, you can't do that. Chester, let's go pick him up. That's him, all right, Mr. Dillon. Standing there in the light. Yeah. I see him. Must be a dozen or more of his riders with him. Chester, you keep Tom Wayne covered. The rest of them will wait for him to make the first move. I'll take Billy. Yes, sir. Maller! Well, now, what do we got here? Local marshal, huh? Put the gun away, Muller. Why don't you try to put it away for me, Marshal? All right. Mr. Wayne, you'll keep your hands still and in plain sight. I said put the gun away, Billy. You're talking mighty big, Marshal. For a man with empty hands. That ten star of yours makes a good target. I got me a whole collection of stars like that. That's far enough. 
You better hold it right where you are. I gave you two warnings, Billy. That's one more than I usually give a man. Now you hand over that gun. I told you to take it if you think you can. No, let go of it. You've been that gun barrel someday, Marshal. Laying it over a man's head that way. Don't worry about it, Wayne. As long as it's not your head. I'm not worried. I would be, though, if I was wearing that star of yours. Why? Old King Malley, he don't like badge toters much. Especially when they buffalo the boy here. And he better leave the boy at home when he brings a herd north. Does he get away with this kind of behavior down there? He does. Well, here it's different. You can see for yourself. Maybe it ain't over yet, either. You weren't figuring on drawing a hand, were you, Wayne? It's nothing to me, Marshal. Not unless I get orders from King. Well, he knows where he can find me. Yeah, I reckon. All right. The rest of you men. You can stay up all night, spend your money, do as you please. With one exception. If any one of you pulls a gun inside the city limits of Dodge, you'll get the same treatment as young Maller here. Is that clear? Come on, John. Let's go. All right, Chester, let's drag him over to the jail. <laughs> Mr. Dillon? All right, in you go, Billy. Uh, uh, I'm sure he is out cold. Well, it's better than having a bullet in the stomach. That's what he was asking for. He certainly was. I declare, Mr. Dillon, if you don't stop taking chances when a man's already got a gun in his hand... Chester, you can't shoot every cowboy who has a snort or two and starts to take it out on the town. I know, sir, but... Here, hand me that bucket of water there in the corridor, will you? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, Billy. <coughs> yeah, that ought to bring him around. All right, Chester, lock up the cell. Just a minute there, Marshal. Don't lock that cell. Lock it up, Chester. Yes, sir. Yeah, I just told you to stop that matter. Didn't you hear me? I can probably hear you clear back in Texas. Now, what's on your mind? I'll tell you what's on my mind. I want my boy out of that cell. And I want him out in a hurry. Come around in the morning when the court opens. He's under arrest. Arrest? You? I can buy you in this 30-cent town of yours and never know the difference. Maybe. But we'd know it. Now you shut up and get out of here. I've argued about this long enough. Either you'll open that cell or hand over the key. I'm sorry. Uh, you there, come on, hand them over. Here now, Mr. Mallard. What's Dang, you've gone far you? enough. You think some tin horn is going in? To... I said leave him alone. Let, let go of me, Dylan. Chester, unlock the cell. Yes, sir. I'm warning you, Marshal, for the last time. If you don't get your hands off me. Sure, King. Here you go. <laughs> Now lock it up, Chester. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll break you, Dylan. I'll break you and run you out of the country. Sure. Sure, I know. But you'll have to wait till tomorrow morning. <laughs> Kind of quiet around town, Mr. Dillon, with them mallards locked up. Well, you and Chester look thirsty, man. I brought you a pitcher of beer. On the house. Well, it's not a bad idea, Kitty. Well, thank you. I know. Uh, heard about the mallards. They ought to be locked up in the same cell. They're two of a kind. Well, Kitty, it's... I don't know. Kid always has had his way paid for him by the old man's money. 
I don't know who's more to blame. Excuse me, Kitty. Uh Uh-huh. But uh, I don't know exactly what I'm supposed to do here. Uh, Well, you'll learn, honey. Oh, Matt, I don't think you've met Nora Beale. Huh? Matt Beale and Nora. And uh, just a proud foot. Proud to know you. How do you do, ma'am? Well, now, honey, all you got to do right now is just stand around and look beautiful. I'll be along in a second and show you the rope. Oh, well, thank you, Kitty. I'm very pleased to have met both of you. Thank you. Likewise, ma'am. Oh, where'd she come from? She's new in Dodge, isn't she? Oh, yeah. She's real sweet, Matt. She's a singer from Chicago or somewhere. She got stranded here a couple of days ago. She only plans to work a week. Excuse and me, Miss Kitty. Mr. Dillon, look. There's King Mallard. What? Over at the bar there. Mr. Kelby. Well, what's he doing out of jail, man? <laughs> My gracious, you arrest a man and throw him in jail and an hour and a half later he's out loose again. It's aggravating. But I'm sure he won't mean any harm by it, Mr. Mallard. It's just that sometimes he's got... Well, now. Now, Marshal, let's keep our temper. Shut up. King, how did you get out of jail? When I've got anything to say to you, Dylan, I'll look you up. Now, now, Marshal, it's all perfectly legal. Mayor came down to his office, he fixed bail, and he released Mr. Maller and his son. They're both out, huh? Who went bail for this, Covey? Now, it's all in the best interest of the town, Marshal. Just like I've been telling Mr. Maller here. It was just a misunderstanding. And all of us hope he won't hold it against it. Kelvy, I ought to run you in for obstructing justice. <laughs> Somebody fired from the street, Mr. Dillon. I'll go out there. What? What? What is it, Kitty? No, Bill got hit, man. She's hurt. Bad. <laughs> We will return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, giving medical and welfare assistance to our armed forces and veterans, collecting much-needed blood, training our citizens for service in case of a national emergency, and always on the spot first with disaster relief, these are some of the many services of the American Red Cross. But this all costs money, $85 million this year. So please answer the call. Give generously to the Red Cross. Now for the second act of Gunsmoke. Somebody sent for Doc. Uh, yeah, and the dealers went after him. Oh. Uh, there now. Now look, Nora. Don't try to move now. Looks like she was hit twice. Uh, Matt, do you think that she had a chance at all? I don't know, Kitty. Uh, poor kid. Oh, oh, oh. It's all right, honey. Doc will be here soon. What? Why did they shoot me? Well, I, I think they were trying to get me, Nora. Not you. Why did they do it? Why? Oh. Oh, where's Doc? Why doesn't he get here? You want me to go after him, Mr. Dillon? Oh, please. I, I feel so... So... I... No, Chester, there's no need for Doc to hurry now. Matt, she was so, so... Yeah. Well, 
The doc can take care of it when he gets here. Looks like Billy Mallor really pulled something this time, Mr. Billy. No? How do you know it was Billy, Chester? Well, sir, half a dozen people saw him fire through the window and then ride off down the street. Yeah. I got a feeling those shots weren't wild. They were aimed. Only they were aimed at me. You were just lucky, Mr. Dillon. Where's Billy now, Chester? I don't know, sir. I heard the Mallard Bunch is getting ready to pull out. They're milling around the street out in front of their hotel. King Mallard and Tom Wayne are there. Yeah. Well, they'll cover Billy, of course. It's going to be a lot tougher this time. Yes, sir. A whole lot tougher, I reckon. Kitty? Yeah. Will you sort of take charge of things here until Doc shows up? Oh, sure, Mac. You go on. Get your posse. Posse? You'll need one, Miss. When you move in with a posse, you ask for a gunfight. Works on a man like an out-and-out challenge. I'm going to handle it alone. But there must be 50 of them, Matt. Only three that count, as long as we can control the Mallers and Tom Wayne. The others don't matter. Marshal! Huh? Oh, Kelby. You got another suggestion for the best interests of the town? Now, listen here. You can't go up there, Marshal. That'll just lead to more killing. Won't do anybody any good. This wouldn't have happened, you know, if you'd taken my advice not thrown that boy in jail. And it wouldn't have happened if you'd have stayed out of it and left him in jail, Kelby. But tomorrow morning, he'd have sobered up and cooled off. Well, what's done's done. But they're getting ready to leave now. You can pass the word for King not to bring the boy along when he comes up next year and let it go at that. Don't make it any worse now, Marshal. Yeah. Let it go at that, huh? Don't antagonize him, huh? Look the other way. It's just Billy Mallard kicking up his heels, so let's stay real quiet. And maybe he won't commit another murder. Murder? It wasn't murder. That was an accident. It was murder. He meant to kill somebody, and he did. The only accident about it was the fact that he didn't kill me. Well, it's just a common dance hall girl. Nobody's going to pay any mind. I mind, Kelby. And the law minds. And you stay out of this from now on. You understand me. Now, Dylan, you're not talking to some saddle bum. Yeah. Chester. Yes, sir. Matt. Yeah, Kitty. I'm not going to help to go get yourself killed. It seems to me I'm being sold awful short around here. They outnumber you 20 to 1. Kitty, if I let Mallard get away with this, I'd be through in Dodge City, and so would the law. It was hard work bringing the law in here. And it's been hard work keeping it here. And it'd be ten times harder trying to bring it back if it ever got shoved out. Yeah. All right, Matt. But do one thing, will you? What? Wait here. I'll be right back. Right. Here, take this shotgun with you. Red keeps it back of the bar, but you take it, Matt. It'll help the odds a little, at least. It, it's a good idea, Mr. Dillon. I'd sure feel a lot easier in my mind if you took it. Well, all right. Thanks, Kitty. I'll see you. She was a pretty little thing. Yeah. Seems a shame. There they are, Mr. Dillon. Out there in the street in front of the hotel. Yeah, I see him. Looks like the whole Mallor mob. This ain't going to be very easy. Uh, King and Wayne are there, but I don't see Billy. No, sir, I don't either. Those two are the ones to watch, Chester. Don't let them start a play. Yes, Mr. Dillon, I understand. Here comes Marshal, Mr. Mallard. King, 
I want that boy of yours. What's he charged this time, Dylan? Murder. That girl died. She died. Now, where's Billy? Where'd you get the idea he had anything to do with it? Half a dozen people saw him fire the shots from the street. Well, I say he wasn't near that street. Well, don't say it to me. Say it in court. Now, where is he, King? Marshal, there's 40 of my riders standing here in the street. Every one of them packing a gun. I suppose you just turn around and start walking. I said, where's Billy? All I got to do is give the word, Dylan. These boys will drop you right in your track. You're not giving anybody the word, mm. King. Huh? Buckshot's got a pretty fair spread. Now, at the first sign of any move by this bunch, and I'll get you and Wayne with one blast. Now, you better warn him, King. <coughs> Dylan, you're barking up the wrong tree here. Billy rode out of town, headed south. That's his horse tied there at the rail, isn't it? All right, where is he, King? Inside the hotel? Now, look, Marshal, there's no call for all this. Maybe Billy did get a little bit out of line. He's always been a high-spirited youngin', but there's no reason for us to lose our heads. You know you got no case against him. Every one of my men here will swear he wasn't anywhere near that shoot. They'll get their chance at the trial. Well, now, that's just the trouble. We can't hang around here waiting for a trial. It's cost me money, but I'm willing to spend quite a bit, Marshal, to avoid the inconvenience. Never mind, King. Don't be a fool, Marshal. Shut up. Wayne, move over a little closer to him, Hemp. All right, that's it right there. All right. The rest of you men fish your guns out and drop them on the ground. Now, slow and easy. No sudden moves. Watch him, Chester. Yes, sir, I am. All right. Back up now, out into the street, away from those guns. A whole bunch of you. Move! Here, Chester, take the shotgun. Keep him covered. Yes, sir. Hold it now. Just like you are. Nobody will get hurt. Dylan, what you gonna do? I'm going in the hotel and bring out that kid. Watch him, Chester. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Well, now's your time. Go ahead if you want. The Mallers won't bother you. Thank you, Marshal. And the best of luck to you, sir. Billy, you better give up. Billy, you 
You haven't got a chance. If you know what's good. Now hold it, Billy. Throw your gun out into the hall. I'm going to kill you, Dylan. It's your last chance, Billy. Now come out into the hall and give yourself up. I'll kill you so help me. Dylan. Dylan, was that... Is he dead? Yeah. I gave him two chances. He wouldn't take them. Yeah. Headstrong. Or was worse. Guess... Maybe, maybe I didn't bring him up right. It's too late to worry about that now. But uh, I'm sorry, King. For Billy and for the girl both. He had it coming. I know that, Marshal. I tried to stop it. Too late. The only way I knew. But you wouldn't bluff. Tom, go get him. We'll have to bury him in Kansas. All right, King. We'll be leaving Dodge right after. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Sam Edwards, John Daner, Lawrence Dobkin, Harry Bartell, Charlotte Lawrence, and Barney Phillips. Polly Bear is Chester, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Gunsmoke is heard by our troops overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, Fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Every Sunday evening, CBS Radio presents My Little Margie, a hilarious comedy show starring Charles Farrell and Gail Storm. It's a worthy addition to the Sunday Fun Day lineup, a program that's packed with laughs from start to finish. Listen for My Little Margie on most of these same stations, tomorrow night presented by CBS Radio. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>